So service mesh is what allows safe and secure connections between the applications as well as the ingress and egress to the different paths. Last but not, or you can use any other different cloud provider. Uh, we have Docker, we have Kubernetes, and also you need to learn Terraform, Linux, and JFrog Artifact. Hi guys, my name is Saurabh Porwal. And if you have been watching this channel, uh, you would know that uh, I've been talking about DevOps and cloud and uh, all these different technologies. So today is going to be a bit different video. So we'll be talking about the roadmap for a, a DevOps career path. Now I've developed a roadmap for DevOps career. Uh, so let's get around to it. So this is the start for a DevOps career roadmap. So I call it as a four step foolproof path. So for obvious reasons that we'll see. So the first thing that you will see is that uh, we have uh, just a path to, if, if you say a dream job. So for any DevOps engineer, if he wants to fetch their own, their different target jobs. So everybody will be working on their own different stages. So the first stage is learning all the different technologies uh, in DevOps. So which would include Git, Jenkins, AWS. So AWS is important for a, or you can use any other different cloud provider. Uh, we have Docker, we have Kubernetes, and also you need to learn Terraform, Linux, and JFrog Artifactory. So these technologies, they comprise of a basic DevOps. Uh, you need to understand all these different technologies, why they're being used, why you would use source control, why you would use CI, why you would use CD, uh, what's the importance of Docker, Kubernetes, uh, how you, would you use Artifactory, Terraform. So all these different technologies. So it's very, very important to understand all these different concepts. So, that, so you have a base understanding of uh, what DevOps is. The step two of this plan is to learn more advanced cloud technologies. So you would go and do more certifications on AWS or GCP or Azure. So you need to understand very much in detail and you need to understand about DevSecOps. So security is a very important concept in, uh, in any cloud provider. So if you are a cloud engineer or cloud, cloud architect, or you want to be anything in, in related to cloud, so it's very, very important to include DevSecOps in your profile. The third stage is to complete projects. Now projects, including all the different technologies that you have learned in step one and step two. So these projects make the foundations of whatever you have learned into a practical experience. Many of the candidates haven't worked on the projects and that is why they find it difficult to crack interviews because in an interview, when, when they're asked, what are the different challenges that they faced while using all these different technologies, what are the different types of projects they have done? They do not have much idea about it. So it is very, very important to do at least three or four different projects comprising of various technologies so they can include it in their career roadmap. And last but not the least is to work on the soft skills. So getting a job is not just a matter of technology. You need to focus on the way that you are speaking. You need to focus on uh, the different types of interviews that you will be giving, uh, what you need to give mock interviews so that you are prepared for it. You need to have your CV refined uh, so that uh, your CV is very polished. Now, remember that your CV is the face to your interviewer. So the first thing that they do is uh, check your CV and that is how you get called. So your CV has to be very, very immaculate and very, very proper. Along with that, uh, LinkedIn is also another channel through which the candidates get different types of calls. So it's very important to have their LinkedIn refined. And once you have all these different four things, uh, that is the proper way to get a DevOps job. So you might be anywhere in this path. So you might have you might have completed step one and you might be in the middle of step two. You might be lacking different sort of certifications or you might be between step two and step three where you need to do all these projects. While you're doing these projects, you will get an idea that uh, all these different technologies, how they line up together. And then when you do a mock interview, uh, that is where you identify all the different gaps in your soft skills that you have. So I hope you find this video uh, encouraging. Uh, so it's a, it's a clear roadmap and it's a foolproof roadmap because if you follow this path, uh, there's no stopping. The subscriptions are very important to us because that is how we know how many people want to connect with this channel. Uh, also the likes and, and comments, uh, they very, very do well with the YouTube algorithms. Now in regards to this career roadmap, so the mentorship program that we offer, it covers all these different four stages. 
So it covers everything from basic to intermediate and then to advanced level certifications in cloud technologies. So we cover up certifications in AWS, uh, in GCP, Azure. We guide you to how to achieve it. Also, then we work on two different projects. So currently we have got four projects that, that you can work on. And we also focus on the mock interviews, CV refining, LinkedIn profiling, and all these different stuff. Now, in continuation to the roadmap, so I found some very interesting stuff online, which I wanted to share with you. So, yeah, so this is not my creation, but it's a, it's a very interesting article. And uh, let's see as to what it says. So this is also a roadmap to DevOps. So the first step that it says is that uh, when you're starting up your DevOps career, let's say if you're starting from scratch, uh, first thing is you need to learn a programming language. So which is something like Python or Ruby or Rust, Go, JavaScript, Node.js. So any sort of programming language. So this is important because when you're doing the scripting and automation, you have a very, very good idea of, about uh, how these algorithms work, how to write in these structures, how to write in the scripts. So learning a programming language definitely helps. So the next is learning any sort of operating system. So operating system means uh, Linux in particular. So Linux can be in any flavor. It can be Ubuntu, Debian, or Red Hat Linux, or any sort of Linux systems. You also need to be very, very familiar with the terminals. So learning about uh, how to do the process monitoring, performance monitoring, what are the different networking tools, how to do any text or random manipulations in Linux, uh, similarly using like said or, or any sort of uh, text manipulations. Uh, in terms of uh, your terminals, uh, you will be also learning bash scripting, PowerShell, uh, also be aware of the VI and the, all these nano editors. The next path is you need to understand about the version control systems where you'll be uh, doing the all the application source code controls uh, with VCS hosting, uh, which is your version control system hostings like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. So this will cover all your, about your source control. And then you need to learn about what is and how to set up. So this is about how to set up a caching server, a load balancer, how to set up firewalls, what are the roles of reverse proxy and forward proxy. So this is from the networking point of view. It's also very uh, important for a DevOps engineer to understand. The next set is containers. So everybody must be knowing about Docker. At least you've heard of it. Not many people know about LXC, but this is also a container technology, but uh, Docker is the more prominent one. So you need to understand Docker and get very, very familiarized with it. And then regarding the cloud providers, you need to get into either of the cloud providers, which is AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, uh, DigitalOcean is another cloud as well, or you can go into any other cloud providers as well. But if you understand about just, let's say AWS, that is good enough. Because if you have an understanding of AWS, you'll find it very easy to switch over to Google Cloud and Azure as well. The next path is networking, security, and protocols. So understanding HTTP, SSL, TLS, SSH, HTTPS, DNS. So this will come up inherently while you are doing networking. So networking is a very important concept when you're understanding DevOps. Uh, because that is how all your applications, they connect to each other. Uh, you maintain the security through networking. So networking becomes a very, very essential part of it. Then you need to have an understanding about the serverless functions. So serverless is, uh, you don't need to install the servers, but you will be able to run up your functions in a, in a serverless way. Uh, there are servers produced, uh, procured by AWS or Azure at the backend, but you don't need to. Uh, procure the servers. You just need to run your functions. So you should know about the serverless technologies, which is Netlify, GCP functions, AWS Lambda, Cloudflare, or any of these Azure functions. Next is infrastructure provisioning. So this is where you learn how to procure your automated infrastructure. So you can use CloudFormation, you can use Terraform, Pulumi, AWS CDK. So all these are the tech stack to procure uh, automated infrastructure. Configuration management is important because uh, that is that helps in uh, the automated provisioning of uh, your uh, infrastructure, uh, as well as automated provisioning of the different configurations on your server. So in this, you, you need to understand about any of these, especially Ansible is more popular among all these three, uh, whereas in infrastructure provisioning, it's the Terraform which is more popular. 
Then in the career path is learning some CI/CD tools. So there are multiple CI/CD tools available. So uh, working on Jenkins is pretty easy, but now you also have GitHub Actions, which is coming up, Circle CI. Learning any any of these, just just one of the tool is good enough, but uh, you need to have a, a super understanding of any CI/CD tool. The concept of secrets management is important because uh, that is where you should be storing your secrets. Uh, you don't uh, leave your secret just in plain text. So there are different vaults which are available. Uh, you've got uh, key management systems in AWS and in Google Cloud. So you need to learn about the secret management. Next is infrastructure monitoring. So monitoring is very essential. If you're, if you're using any sort of application or infrastructure, it needs to be monitored for the health checks. So you've got Prometheus, Grafana, Datadog, Zabbix. Uh, there are a few more which it has not mentioned. So there is AppDynamics, there's Dynatrace. Uh, so, but any sort of infrastructure monitoring as well. So I think there should also be uh, AWS CloudWatch or Google Cloud Monitoring, all these different tools. The next in the roadmap is application monitoring. So which is your open telemetry, Datadog, New Relic, all these app dynamics. Uh, you got Dynatrace here as well. So it can monitor all the different applications and the health of app the applications. The next in stack is logs management. So you need to have an understanding about uh, Splunk, uh, which is uh, which is very important. So even if you don't know Splunk in detail, but uh, just understand that it does log management. It analyzes all the logs. Uh, you've got Elastic Stack, you've got Gray Logs, Paper Trail. There are different sort of log management tools. For container orchestration, Kubernetes is the most important. So if you just know about Kubernetes, uh, that would that would get you a lot of information. You also have GKE, EKS, and AKS, which is uh, automated uh, container provisioning and the container orchestration tools within these individual cloud providers. Uh, but uh, Kubernetes is the backend which is used in all of them. Artifact management, uh, you need to have an understanding of what is an artifact and why it should be managed, what is the role-based access, artifactory, nexus. Uh, these are the two prominently used artifact management tools. Uh, next is the understanding about GitOps, which is Argo CD or Flux CD. And, and then it's, we are almost about to complete. So it, it's the concept of service mesh, uh, where you have Istio. Uh, so the service mesh would help in the networking of the internal applications. Uh, so whether you are in a GKE cluster or you're in... So service mesh is what allows safe and secure connections between the applications, as well as the ingress and egress to the different paths. Last but not the least is your cloud design patterns. So which will ensure the availability, data management, designing and implementation, management and monitoring. So how, how you should be architecting an application, how an application should be designed from the cloud point of view. So this is a basic framework of a DevOps roadmap. So this is how the career roadmap should proceed. So as I said earlier, in the mentoring program, we cover all these different concepts, all these different tool stacks, so we cover all of them that I just spoke about. And also we also focus on the different soft skills, uh, resume building, uh, also the mock interviews. So I hope you like this video, guys. Uh, this is a very, very important video uh, in relation to how a DevOps career should be and uh, what roadmap it should follow. So if you like this video, uh, please put in a comment, ask your questions, put in a like, thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel so we know how many people would want to watch these type of videos uh, in future. And that is really helpful for us. If you want to connect to us, uh, there's a WhatsApp group, uh, which is defined in the description. You can connect using that WhatsApp group. Uh, using that WhatsApp group, you will get our personal WhatsApp numbers, uh, which you can then connect to. So have a nice day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.